Welcome to the Growth Whisperers, where everything we talk about is building enduring great companies. I'm Brad Giles, and as always, I'm joined today by my co-host, Kevin Lawrence. Hello, Kevin. How are things today? Things are really good. It's been a busy, really busy week. I'm a little on the tired side. Um, I'm, 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 I'm looking forward to the end of the day. And, uh, but yeah, I am actually, I am, I am doing amazing, just well used up. Good to hear. Good to hear. I've had a busy week as well. I had last week, I had two, two day annuals and one day of travel. So I did a two day strategic planning. And then on Wednesday, traveled to Sydney from Perth on a plane, a flying plane. An aeroplane? The That's aeroplane. awesome. Which was, yes, which was awesome. And then two days of strategic planning in Sydney and then back to, um, back to Perth. So yeah, very, very busy last week. Um, yeah, which, which was, which was good. It was good to get back into that. But, uh, as we so often do in Australia, when I arrived, there was an outbreak in Sydney of the, the, the virus. Mm. Um, so everyone was on, uh, was on high alert. And by the time I left, everyone was wearing masks and I escaped having to lock down by about six hours. So, um, blessed Jeez. for that. Yeah. Yes. Grateful, I'm sure. Grateful. Yeah. So tell me, what is your word of the day, word or phrase mm-hmm. of the day? What mm-hmm. comes to mind? So the, the one today is is celebrate or make a darn excuse to celebrate or celebrate what's good in the world. You know, I have a, uh, a friend that sent me this great um, TED Talk last week. This guy's name is DeWitt Jones. He's a National Geographic photographer. Mm-hmm. And he talked about seeing what's good in the world. And, and photography is a metaphor for the beauty in the world and how with National Geographic magazine, no one throws it away because it's a, it captures all this amazing beauty of life. It's a, anyway, it was a beautiful podcast. And I've been thinking about it. Anyone last week, I, I had a, a birthday myself. I had a few good friends that had birthdays. Um, uh, my, my daughter you know, got her learner's license the week before. My son graduated from high school. Uh, and there was something else. Oh, a friend of mine, you know, just just you know, closed a major business transaction, and 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 there was a few other things. But it was it was about celebrating, and you know, and, and even to top it off, uh, I went and and toured uh, on the weekend uh, a company that that makes um, sparkling wine, cham- true champagne style sparkling wine. And you know what 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 else in the world is designed for celebrating than champagne? Champagne is celebration so um so yeah so go so getting to experience and, and get the full detailed tour and i i've been done, done it before but you know went, went again um and uh on a beautiful day in the summer uh which felt like a celebration in itself because you could be out and about and then all these other celebrations and just going you know yeah so celebrate like there's always so much to celebrate and uh sometimes we're so busy doing that we don't and it just feels damn good to celebrate we could probably do a whole podcast on celebration. It feels really, really good. So that's, yeah, so that's my word, celebrate. I can only imagine what yours is, Brad, and I know, <laughs> I know it won't be the same. <laughs> it's not the same. Um, yeah, mine is the world will never be the same again. Um, hmm. and, and I don't mean that in a, in, a, in a bad way, but we've spoken about this in the early days of the podcast quite a bit, but it, yep. traveling to Sydney, it really just made me reflect from many different angles um, that the world has changed. Like you think before and after 9-11 or before and after the Great Depression, and these are major events, but but the world was not and could not ever be the same again. And so just it's just got me thinking the world will never be the same again. And there's great positives in that. I'm not being negative necessarily, but yeah, just the world will never be the same again. Yeah. So th- thank you. That, that, that goes brilliant with mine. So you can celebrate that the world will never be the same again. It's like celebrating evolution, celebrating progress. That was that was perfect. You would think that we planned that in advance, even though we didn't. We didn't. So let's I, drop into let's drop into today's show. And we're gonna we're gonna do you know, we're gonna do a, a quicker show today. And we're gonna you know experiment with some quicker ones because we always have a lot to say, but you know, maybe people don't always have a lot of time. So what's what are, what are we what are we doing today? We are talking 
about why you need a quarterly reset. So it's coming up for the end of June um, and the middle of the year. And these kinds of events in the calendar or transition periods in the calendar um, get you to think about a reset. Um, and um, you actually wrote about this in your book, Kevin. So we're going to talk a little bit about that today. Why you need a quarterly reset? Yeah, and and you know, in many ways, just like celebrating, you get to think about all the good things that are going on and, and enjoy that. Uh, sometimes, when not so good things happen, you you get a chance to to reflect. And you know, we lost um, very sadly. I think last week. Uh, you know, um, uh, a guy, Jerry Jagger, his name, who was a part of the racetrack we're members of called Area 27. Young guy passed away and, uh, you know, kind of shocked all of us in the community. And, um, you know, it gets you, you know, when, so when someone that doesn't, when someone that, that you really like or care about passes away, it makes you think yeah. uh, as well. So those, there's, there's life events that cause reflection. Um, but we don't want to rely on those. We don't, we don't, we don't need any more of those. And I don't want to say, I would say, just, I want to say, by the way, just a, a note about, a show about Jerry. Jerry was an amazing guy. Every time I saw the guy, he was smiling and happy. And interesting as people are posting stuff on Facebook and other places, everyone says the same damn thing. Yeah. Nicest guy ever, always smiling and happy. And uh, it was it almost, almost uh, he, you know, he left a legacy. I don't know if he knows that he left, unfortunately. But that's you know, what a great way to be remembered, right? Just some yeah. of the people that people loved being around. That was him. Anyway, sad, but but the point is, is that we have those events and it makes you contemplate. But 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 ideally, we build a rhythm or a discipline into our contemplating and what matters most. And we normally do in companies. We have goals, and some companies only run annual goals, which I'm not a big fan of. As neither are you. You need mm -hmm. quarterly because you have basically it's more frequent accountability. And then resetting points. Yeah. So I am. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I've <clears throat> I've been doing quarterly planning for literally decades, and I remember one person in particular. Um, he said, "It feels like it's time to come back together." And this was like a week before our quarterly. Yeah. There, there's actually a. There is something inside of us that aligns us with the quarter. Now, my very unprofessional theory is it's it's to do with the rhythm of the seasons, okay? So mm. we can go through a summer for long enough before we see the transition into what we would call autumn. Mm. Before 90 days, we would see the transition into winter. And these 90-day cycles are really quite deeply built into us and therefore when we translate that into business it feels like it's time for a change it feels like it's time um, to move on and to have a reset into the next season um, I've a few times in my life I've spent the summer in Australia and then sent, spent some or a large part of the summer in the northern hemisphere and it just feels like it, it feels like it's a bit much um, so oh, I think interesting. Yeah, my theory is that it's it's something that is you know uh, a part of us as humans that lasts um, ninety days that we you know we need a change after ninety days or a reset. Yeah, because things kind of get fragmented and frayed. You want to bring it back together. And for me, I think about it as you know as as my kids were younger, I think of almost the season of school. Yeah. Right. There's the there's the summer period. There's back to school in September. There's the restart in January. There's the restart after spring break. You know, it's similar type of rhythms. The point of it is having that that discipline. So, you know, what we really recommend and it's not rocket science is that, you know, you do it yourself. Ideally, you do it with your, your partner in life or you could do it with your team or, you know, a coach or advisor or somebody. But you do some work, but then you get someone to help you lock it in. So for example, tomorrow morning, I'm meeting with my coach. I work with myself and I'm going to go through this process and get it locked in because of that's, you know, that's the time that we have. And then I've got the team company version later in the day. And then the company version, you, you know, we, we often get people to set goals, you know, one around and some goals around life and around self, not just work. Um, uh, but not all companies do. We recommend it, but not all companies do. And the point of it is there's a deep version you would do for yourself to contemplate. And then there's probably a later version 
of the work and self stuff that you might do, sorry, the life and self stuff you might do with, with your team at work. So I think the starting point is just, you know, in, in, in your oxygen mask first, we break it down between work, self and life, right? Work is your career or, or money and investments, right? Stuff that generates cash and ideally enjoyment because of the, you know, connected to a purpose. And self is about you and being happy, strong and healthy. You personally just being your best, normally the most neglected one for a lot of people. And then your life, your family, friends, and your community. That could be if you're doing, you know, you know, charity work and obviously your, your, your family. But just reflecting and breaking it down so you just don't look overall because it's, it's too messy and kind of lumped together. Yeah, <clears throat> you've got to be able to divide it into these areas. It's fair to say that in our brain, everything is mashed together. But by segmenting it, it means that we don't, um, we don't revert to what we may intuitively go to, which is we may, people like you and I, Kevin, would probably intuitively go to work, but yes, then, you would, then you would sacrifice the self or you would um, sacrifice other areas. So um, being able to segment and focus around different areas and you correctly kind of attribute it to three separate areas, I think is really, really important. And gives us the opportunity um, to, to not end up in this difficult situation where I know like the two of us have been in our lives where we're like, everything's going really well in one area, but not so good in another area, or I'm getting burned out over there because of something else that I'm doing. Yes. And it's like the three plates that you're constantly spinning or three hula hoops that you're constantly you got going or the three you know knives you're juggling, whatever metaphor you want to use you know, work, self, and life. And if any one of them is in a bad place, it affects the others, particularly self. But if life is not good or, or neglected, and the, the idea is, is to keep reminding yourself of what's most important and making sure you set goals in all three areas, not just at work, which is kind of natural for people is to have goals for work only. Could you just clarify, because I've read your book and I'm a big fan, but could you just clarify, please, for the listeners, what do you mean by work, self, and life? What What is your definitions there? Yeah, so again, work, and I, 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 I sort of, I think I covered a little bit earlier, but it's work is, it's about your job, your career, mm -hmm. or your company. And it's basically, and, 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 and money or investments. So things that generate cash for you, right? Because, you know, you, you, you might, manage on a, a bunch of investments but that would be your work it's the things that generate cash and and I, I deal with self is you just you as a individual being strong resilient and happy and then yeah. life family friends and community that's Good. that's your but it's separating yourself from your life because they get blended together and your and your life can require a lot of energy and you can give none to yourself and then you kind of deplete the whole system and that's the whole thing if you don't consistently increase and build your own energy and your own energy reserves, you don't have as much to give. And the idea is to master conscious selfishness, yeah. which is where you take insanely good care of yourself so you can perform and do what you want at work and have enough energy and gas in the tank to still live a great life and be a great influence in your life. Yeah. yeah. That's the idea. And so this quarterly reset, what we're saying is consider work self life and going through these different areas. So this is a tool from your book. Yep. And I'll just flash it on screen for those that are watching. And you, and you can go to YouTube and we should probably put just a link to this in the notes. Um, but the, the, there's the definitions across the top. And we'll just walk through. There's, there's some reflection questions. We'll walk through those. And then the second page, there's, there's where you lay out, okay, how am I going to do the next quarter better in terms of work, self, and life? Very good. So the first one, do you want to walk us through them? The first yeah, one it's is just, it's just the, it's with biggest achievements, but breaking, and then there might be some overlap and that's okay. But what were your biggest achievements? Let's start with the good stuff. Let's start with the stuff you feel good about and proud about and where you won, because the whole idea is to, is to be able to have more things that do uh, work out and or feel good. Right. You achieve it or, or, or you end up feeling good about it or proud about it in the end. So, you know, it's, it's not rocket science. So what were your biggest achievements in those three areas? And this is something that we do at annual, uh, annual and quarterly planning as well. We look back and we say, where did we win? Where did we lose? 
it's kind of like the scoreboard for the last period, just reflecting on that before we move on. Yeah, exactly. It's not rocket science. Yeah. And then the second thing is, is, you know, what were the biggest challenges or disappointments, right? Like what, what didn't work or didn't get done? Like, you know, what, and you know, in acknowledging this stuff and then looking at it, and then you can sort of go in at some point, why? Like, what was the deal there? Why yeah. was that? And there's, there's learning that comes from that. And whether it's about recalibrating your goals or what not to do next time, whatever it happens to be, but you know, what, you know, where didn't you win? Yeah. And there's always somewhere and that's okay. Um, you know, uh, I think it was Bill Gates that said success is a lousy teacher. Um, exactly. And so the disappointments, the failures, that's the opportunity to learn and grow and, and acknowledging that thinking about that is important. It is. So next is passion ratios. And when I look at it, it's like, if we have a hundred units of our best energy every week, how do we allocate our best energy? Not just our time, because look, you know, I, I remember times when I would use up and be cooked from work, I could show up and spend time with my kids but they were getting a, you know, a C grade quality. They weren't getting the A grade, Kevin. They were getting what was left over and there was not much left in the tank or when yeah. I was jet lagged. So it's about your best energy and how much of it you dedicate. Uh, and there may or may not be a relationship with time on this, but you know, how much of your energy did you invest each quarter, your best energy in work, self and life? And then in hindsight, hindsight always is easier. You know, what would have been ideal? Like, you know, if, if you, you know, if, if you did 80 to work and 10 to self and 10 to life, you know, maybe you go, well, you know, truly probably 65 to work, you know, 15 to self uh, and uh, 20 to life, right? I'm making up numbers. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But that, it, it, or, or, or maybe it was perfect, but it's, it helps you to recalibrate your allocation. And this is where a lot of us get messed up and the magic and, you know, we talk about this a lot with executives is, is to still be able to dedicate a lot of time and energy to work hmm. and have more time and more energy somehow. And by freeing up unproductive stuff, which we'll talk about in a future episode, um, to, you know, to be able to um, still have so dedicated a lot to, to work and a lot to life and a lot to yourself. But you got a clear bandwidth out of the system. We'll talk about later. You got a clear bandwidth out of the system. And um a great analogy that someone said to me many, many years ago is think about an Olympic swimmer. They just glide through the water. There's very little yep. splash and they're going at such a fast pace. Whereas when I swim, it's more like a question of, is the person drowning? Is yes. the person moving? Uh, and and what, what kind of a stroke is that? Are they are they doing any type of stroke or is it more splashing? Now, that's, you know, I can swim several kilometers in laps. So th there's a bit of facetiousness in that. But yep. the point that I make is in as a metaphor in terms of our work, by distilling the time or, or, or putting a constraint on the time, it forces us to be more effective. Yep, it, it does. That's the idea. And then the final thing is, is what do you need to start or stop doing to be on track for your annual goals? Because ideally you're, 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 you're recalibrating back to what you wanted to achieve this year, which would be in the other document called the master plan, where you have your long-term goals um, and, then, and then right down to your annual. So just recalibrate with what you've decided you want to do this year is, is the reflection. So I'll throw the page back up on screen for those that want to see it. Pretty straightforward. So achievements, challenges or disappointments, passion ratios, what did you invest? What would have been ideal so you can kind of prep your thinking for next quarter and what do you have to start or stop doing to, to, to deliver on your annual goals? And so for each of those questions you've just mentioned for clarity, you need to answer three points. Your, your work, um, yourself, and the other one I can't remember. Your life. Your life. Thank you. Yes. Um, yeah. So so your, your biggest disappointments, you're answering three questions there for exactly. those who don't have the video. Yeah. For, exactly. There's a call. It's just three columns. Yeah. Three, a bunch of questions going across three columns. Great way to describe it, Brad. So then it's like, okay, I've done a bit of, now you can think about other things, but that is a basic reflection. And you go back and look at your goals and then very simply, I'll throw this back on screen again for a second. You're trying to fill these top two boxes. 
which is for work, self, and life, how, what is those passion ratios? How much of your best passion do you, or your passion, your best energy, do you want to allocate this quarter? You know, for me, I'm coming into summer where I take a bunch of time off. So there's much more for self and life coming up in this coming quarter for me. And then your number one and only your number one project or goal in each area, one for work, one for self, and one for life. And then yeah. and below, there's a spot for other projects, right? Other things that um, you might want to do. But the idea is, what's the number one that must be delivered no matter what? <laughs> Bless you. Pardon me. <laughs> no problem. Um, yeah. And so that so that's really thinking, what's the most... It's a prioritization exercise, and it's a prioritization tool that should become a habit or is good to become a habit. Um, yeah. And that's why we're saying now at the end of June, because if you could go through that simple tool, it is probably going to significantly positively impact your next quarter. Kevin, can you just tell us about toads quickly? Yes. And there's a whole chapter on it in the book. It's loose ends. And, and there's a whole story you can read in the book. I will not do it right now, but yeah. it's basically irritating little things that you try to ignore but they haven't got done and and they distract you and they burden you and so it's it's basically lingering things that may have a low financial value but they have a, a mental drain on you so for example i worked with a, a guy in the automotive business his name was art and every day after work, he was a mechanic, he would come over to the air pump and he would pump up the air in his tire. I'm like, Art, you know, I, I, you're, you're, you got a flat tire. Why don't you fix it? He goes, it's only flat on the bottom. <laughs> and I'm like, and, and he was like, he laughed. He put the air in his tire and he went home. And I'm like, I, point of it is he spent a lot of energy putting air into the tire every single day and maybe thinking about it, or maybe he didn't care. I don't know, but, but, it, but it puts a, a mental toll on you and wastes energy. And sometimes it'll be like updating a will or a, returning a book or saying, thank you. Oh, shoot. I got to send a thank you. One second here. I'm just, rem I'm, I'm remembering it as I'm speaking. Um, <laughs> I got to thank some people from stuff this weekend. Um, but, but it's, 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 it's these things that weigh on your mind and you keep thinking about it and you're just not getting to it because there's a, an internal tension in it and, and your, your spirit is freed when you get them done. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and, then, and then we have habit to start, habit to stop if you were going to do that. And then finally, the last piece of the form is, what do you, okay, this is great to have some goals for the quarter. How are you going to, what are you going to do about it this week to get it jump started and to get it going? Yeah. Like, what are some little steps you can take to get the ball rolling? Yeah, 92% uh, of plans fail due to poor execution. So it's good to have the plan, but then you got to start acting on it. And so then what can you do in the next week to get something moving? Exactly. And it's very straightforward. So the essence is in, 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 in the three different columns for work, self, and life, reflect, hey, what went well, what didn't, how to allocate my energy, how would I allocate it differently? Um, what do I got to start or stop doing to hit my annual goals? Nice. Okay. Now let's, what's, what's the thing that matters most next quarter and ideally getting that number one in each and to be able to do it within the energy you've allocated to that category. And if you say that you're going to run an Ironman and learn the guitar and take 14 weeks off, um, and there's only 13 weeks in the quarter <laughs> <laughs> and, and the Iron Man is going to take 10 hours a week and a guitar is going to take four and it ain't gonna happen. three kids. It's like, you got to really think about any, you know, you're going to need 90% of your energy if that was your goal. Yeah. But if you got to dedicate 90 to work, you just, it's, 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 it's a, just a it's, a, it's a, it's a test to make sure you're setting it up. Right. Yeah. And setting yourself up to win and make progress. Very good. So as it's your book, do you want to give us a summary of these key points again in terms of reset? Yeah, exactly. So number, so number one, uh, very straightforward, you know, is, is the essence, you got to reflect on how you did personally, professionally, and in your life. And you should be looking at all three, because that's the only way you win. The only way you win in the world is if you, if you achieve in all of those areas sustainably. Uh, reflection on the achievements, challenges or disappointments, energy allocation, how to do what would have been better. 
um, start or stop to hit your annual goals. And then um, going forward, how much energy do you allocate to each of those three categories, work, self, and life? Single most important thing in each and ideally stop there. That's the, the high level of what you need. You might have a couple other things you want to do in each. Uh, and then toads, clear up the loose ends, get the stuff that you've been procrastinating and putting off, just get it out of the way. And then, okay, what are a whole bunch of little steps we can take this week? Really straightforward. The key, you got to carve out half an hour, an hour to do the process. That's really about it. And ideally with some sort of a thought partner. That's what I recommend. Awesome. Okay. Good, quick, impactful episode, hopefully. Yes. Identifying it's time to reset. It's the end of the quarter. Here's a simple tool that you can use. Okay. Do you want to take us yeah. out, Kevin? Yeah, yeah. Thanks for listening, everyone. This has been the Growth Whispers podcast with Brad Giles and Kevin Lawrence. I'm Kevin. My partner here is Brad. Uh, for the video version, go to youtube.com, search the Growth Whispers. For Brad, evolutionpartners.com.au. And for myself, lawrenceandco.com. Have a great week.